So let's talk about fibromuscular dysplasia. So fibromuscular dysplasia is a disorder of the of the arteries in which the arteries are abnormally formed, and they can result in either stenosis or uh, or dilation of the of the arteries. So stenosis means stenosis means that the arteries. So if this is an artery, the narrowing of that artery is called stenosis. It can result in dilation, and dilation is called aneurysm. So if this is a vessel, it is abnormally dilated. So this is uh, so it's either stenosis or aneurysm uh, of the arteries. And the reason for this stenosis and aneurysm in muscular dysplasia is uh, is usually unclear, but uh, but it's usually because of the if we see a little anatomy of the of the vessel, we would know that. Uh, the vessel is kind of uh, formed by three layers. Uh, if we then the second layer is the tunica media, and that is made up of muscular layer, and then we have the adventitia, which is connective tissue, and this is the adventitia, which is out the uh, away further away from the lumen. And so what happens is from fibromuscular muscular dysplasia is this layer, the muscular layer, is thickened, and when the muscular layer is thickened. Um, you can imagine what what can happen. It can actually block the vessel. So, so that's uh, the that's uh, the idea about farmers, about how the stenosis occur in fibromuscular dysplasia. Another thing to be aware of is that uh, is that fibromuscular dysplasia is non it is non inflammatory. It is non inflammatory, and so so you should rule out the vascularities that cause um, that cause vascular abnormalities. For example, giant cell arthritis or polio arthritis nodosa. These are all vascularities, and they cause the vessel abnormalities because of inflammation. So this one here is non-inflammatory. Number second, it is also um, non-atherosclerotic, atherosclerotic, and what that means is that. If you have the vessels, so normally what happens in elderly, like the most common form of narrowing of the vessel, is called the uh, is due to atherosclerosis and occur as as people age, and it is worsened by accelerated by uh, by smoking, or smoking or eat, eating um, all of the processed foods, all of that. So in elderly, it is caused by the buildup of fat and uh, cholesterol and fat, uh, atheroemboli, all of the. It, Atheromas that are formed in elderly these are all because of that, but in fibromuscular dysplasia it is not because of these fat buildup in the vessels. It is because it is non-inflammatory, it is non atherosclerotic, and it is uh, mostly just the uh, the structural normality within the vessels. So another thing is demographic. So it most commonly affect uh, women. So about ninety percent occur in women. Then coming to the clinical features, so the clinical features are um, there are two main vessels that it affect. Like the most common vessels that are affected are number first is the uh, number first is here, the internal carotid artery, the internal carotid artery, and so you can imagine if uh, if this is kind of occluded or obstructed, it can result in is you know, transient ischemic attack. Or it can result in stroke. So the TIA is basically just a mini stroke in which the is a neurologic deficit only lasts for like a few minutes. And the reason for these stroke and TIA is uh, is really self-explanatory because when the vessel is narrowed and there's decreased blood flow to the brain, then uh, the, the area that is affected by those uh, the, the areas that that are less. Uh, able to get access to the blood will be affected the watershed areas for example uh, so other things uh, include like uh, your pulsatile tinnitus and these are all because of the turbulent flow the with the vessel the, the blood flow in the vessel is turbulent and they can cause tinnitus also it, the there will be hypertension hypertension can occur here and uh, it can result in recurrent headaches so another common vessel that is affected is the uh, is the renal artery here, and the re the renal artery when it is obstructed that can result in increased release of renin. So let's just talk about this a little. So if this is the let's say this is the kidney, and this is the uh, artery, 
if this artery is let's say obstructed in fibromuscular dysplasia now the kidney will think that there is a uh, hypotension or there is decreased blood in the vessels or in the body and normally what happens is that when there is hypotension or decreased blood flow or the kidney is receiving less blood then it releases something so that it can elevate the blood pressure and increase the flow towards the kidney uh, in this case obviously the, there is no blood loss it is it is just the the fibromuscular dysplasia that is giving the the kidney a false sense of low blood pressure so when the kidney uh, kind of sense that there is low blood pressure because of decreased blood flow so the kidney in response to decreased blood flow will release something called the renin uh, and renin and the renin angiotensin aldosterone are the ROS system renin renin angiotensin aldosterone system will get activated So the renin is released from the GG cells, which are called the juxtagrumellar cells in the kidney. So when the renin is released, renin is released, let's say, renin will be converted. Renin will convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin, angiotensin 1. And angiotensin 1 is then converted to angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme in the lungs okay and so that is important you know and angiotensin 2 can then uh, cause increased release of aldosterone and uh, and also it can cause vasoconstriction to raise to raise the blood pressure and that can result in hypertension aldosterone result in uh, result in increased sodium and water reabsorption in the kidney and that can result in hypertension because of the increased fluid so and the 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 the, the, the blood pressure the the hypertension in the you know, fibromuscular dysplasia is really resistant it's highly resistant so unless you you remove that or correct that uh you you're going to continue having this hypertension because the this this kidney will continue to release renin okay so now, so this was the mechanism of hypertension that occur in the uh, fibromuscular dysplasia. So then, so these were the clinical features. Then on physical examination, physical examination finding is really um, important. So for example, if you put a, uh, so you can hear abdominal bruit, and this is because the renal kidney, the renal artery, sorry, is affected. And also, you can hear a bruit here because it's closer to the ear, the internal carotid artery runs. And so that can result in subauricular bruit. So, subauricular bruit will be heard plus. You can hear abdominal bruit. Okay, so how, we, how do we diagnose this? Well, diagnosis is pretty simple. It's not simple, but uh, pretty easy to understand. It's uh, a double ultrasound, so can be done of this region or this region, whichever region you suspect is involved. And number second is CT, uh, CTA and MRA, which is uh, which are CT and geography. CT and geography. First, double ultrasound. And CT and geo are MR, uh, magnetic resonance and geo. Magnetic resonance angio. So these are the for diagnosis. Then uh, how do you treat it? Well, the treatment is first. This hypertension should be controlled, and the uh, hypertension. So uh, antihypertensives uh, are given. Antihypertensives are given, and the drug of choice uh, appropriately are ACE inhibitors, are uh, are angiotensin receptor inhibitors (ARBs), and the reason is because we talked about the mechanism here. The, the reason for the hypertension is because of the increased renin. So the, uh, the first line agents uh, for this hypertension would be to those that act on the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and uh, blocking them. And these are the ACE inhibitors or the uh, angiotensin receptor inhibitors. Number second would be PTA, percutaneous uh, transluminal angioplasty. So what happens there is that uh, a vessel, for example, if it is narrowed, so a balloon is inserted here and 
the balloon is inserted here and it is then dilated which will open up the vessel and then if that doesn't help then surgery so hope this was helpful just it was just a quick discussion about harbor muscular dysplasia uh, just remember that it is most common in women it's about greater than 90% is, uh, is in women so hope this was clear